All right, what's up guys? Hope you guys are having a great day, man. We're actually matching up with another pro player in this video. Goes by the name of James Piano. Super tough player, actually. Running a very interesting variation of trips as well. Running that 146 on defense. Not really meta this year as it was last year, but it's still just as good, if not better. You guys are going to see how I counter that defense, how I stop Lamar Jackson in that trips offense. It's going to be a very interesting game, man. Basically just walking you guys through my thought process when I'm playing another competitive player. The chess match that goes on in Madden. So hopefully you guys enjoy, man. Hopefully you guys learn something as well. Feel free to comment below if you guys have any gameplay questions, man. Join my Discord. We have over a thousand people in there that discuss the game on a daily basis. Hit that like button, man. If we get to 400 likes, I would greatly appreciate it. And hit that subscribe button as well, man. It helps me out a ton. It's completely free. And I appreciate you guys as always, man. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the highlights. All right, so before we jump into the game, guys, let's go ahead and go over the roster real quick. Now I'm running the Ravens off offensive playbook as well as the 4-6 defensive playbook. Abilities wise, man, we're rocking one edge protector on our left tackle. On our two inside slot receivers, man, we're using short in elite. On Edwin James, we're rocking a backfield mismatch. And on Lamar Jackson, man, the man of the hour recuperation, escape artist, gunslinger, and roaming deadeye. Roaming deadeye so we can hit all our throws on the run outside the pocket. Really nice ability. Make sure you guys check that out for your quarterbacks if you guys are scrambling around a ton. Now, on defense, we're actually using Justin Reed up top with Sherman at free safety and strong safety. They both have tip drill for those crazy drop picks that, you know, I'm so accustomed to getting. Hopefully, that helps fix that issue for our outside linebackers man we got the speedsters Derek thomas and ricky jackson with the double or nothing our starting three corners man rod dion and awesome all have acrobat and then our user simmons has acrobat and secure tackler a lot of people ask me why i prefer simmons over derwin i just like that extra height man simmons is an absolute beast for me now for the chemistries man we're rocking play fake lockdown we have full niners 50 out of 50 we have full sprinter and we have 15 out of 20 pass rush as well so that's a quick breakdown of the lineup man let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay all right now the nice thing about spread is you don't really have to ever flip it if you don't want to you don't have to take the kickoffs either usually i don't ever get back to the 25 and honestly i fumbled a pretty high rate in the kickoffs so being on a hash and spread doesn't really matter and which way you're flipped with the formation doesn't really matter either now the first thing i will do here man is go to conservative for my ball carrier now there are some quarterback runs i'm gonna mix in in this playbook i'm gonna be running around a lot with lamar as well even when i am passing i want to make sure i'm not fumbling and honestly lamar just he really just doesn't fumble when i'm on conservative which is super nice about it now my absolute favorite thing about spread man is these plays are so good stock i don't have to use hara master i don't have to use slot apprentice and it's you know there's a lot of gimmicks here too man there's a really good run game that you can utilize with your quarterback with your running back as well now because the stock plays are so good not only do i not need to spend ap on hara master or slot apprentice or anything like that but i can quick snap these plays so fast and honestly just gives my opponent really no time to adjust we have rb wide open but we're going to take the sack i should have thrown it earlier I'm gonna get super pressure there from Glover. It's gonna bring up a third and really long right here. This is probably a really good time to go ahead, just snap a four verticals play, see if we can get as many yards as we can. He's obviously running this 146 right now, send in the heat. And that is a perfect laser up the cement. I love going to four verticals. I didn't really snap it as fast as I usually snap it there. But on third and long, fourth and long, I love to go for verticals, man. Just catch my opponent trying to do all these adjustments, worrying about the deep corner routes, the deep crossers, and just hitting them with a quick seam. I lowballed it right there as well, so it would go down away from the safety so he wouldn't be able to hit me and knock it out. Now, I haven't played 146 in a while. 146 obviously still very good in Madden. It's been good for a while. I'm going to have to utilize the run game a bit more. Now, my run stick is absolutely abysmal. We have a lot of QB runs in here as well that we can go to. I'm definitely going to be utilizing these a lot against 146, which just really isn't good against the run, but is super good against the pass. Let's try the quarterback wrap right here, man, courtesy of TD Barrett. We have some decent stick work there. We cut it back to left. I maybe could have taken it up the middle, and honestly, I could have scored right there. You know, we have some decent run vision to start, just not able to cut it all the way out to the left and avoid the defender, but a really nice run nonetheless. I have A over the top on the fade, possession catch corner of the end zone. That's an absolute laser. Let's go, baby. 
So it was pretty apparent to me right there that he wasn't going to blitz. He pinched his line to help with the run that we've been killing him with for the last couple of plays. And then from there, it kind of just seemed like man coverage. And I was really just looking for the running back or the crosser if he was running two high safeties. But I saw as soon as I snapped the ball that he had a safety on the right in a middle third. And because that fade from the slot goes all the way to the corner of the end zone, especially because he's not shading over top. That's one of the things as well, man. If your opponent's running man coverage, if your receivers are getting pressed off the line, that means your opponent is shading underneath. And you guys are going to be able to get those streaks, those fades down the sideline open all the time. If your opponent's shading over top, that's where curl routes and hitches are super effective. All right, so this is actually super interesting. I think this is out of the spread playbook, and it looks like it's like trip side end, but with a running back to the other side. I've messed with this formation a little bit. I actually really like it as well. It creates a really interesting look, and it has some really good plays like curl flat that you've seen in, <laughs> in formations like trip side end. Right there, man, I thought we had a chance for an inaccurate pass. Now, his Lamar sailed that on the run. I don't know if he's using roaming dead eye or not. That's what I use on my Lamar. And I use that roaming dead eye because it, it allows me to basically hit every throw on the run. All I have to do is let go of the right trigger as soon as I'm outside of the pocket on the run. And I should get 100% accuracy on pretty much any throw as long as it's not like, you know, 80 yards cross body all the way down the field. But yeah, really good ability. Definitely recommend it if you're using Lamar Jackson. gotta be a pick that was awesome one and a shaded down cloud right there he just didn't put his hands up and kind of smacking you right in the face but third and ten man we can still get off the field right here all right third and ten right here i'm gonna quarter the trip side that way if he runs a deep post or deep crosser from the trip side it should play it i gotta watch for the tight end right here and then the backside post but the backside post should be covered and also while making up for the miss pass six he's gonna go crazy with the acrobat and can we get some stick work came back can we get some, just beat him on the race no oh, awesome one not able to outrun a ferguson right there but he made an awesome play so i really can't be that mad at him I'm honestly kind of surprised that he played it that well. I think that was an outside quarter, and outside quarters actually match this year as long as you don't have zone drops on. He matches the inside cross. Didn't really expect that, but he played it perfectly, and the acrobat ability comes up clutch. Okay, so it looks like to me, as long as he's pinching his line right here, he's going to be running a lot of man coverage. He sends a little four-man right here. I'm going to run up with Lamar. Oh, I thought we were going to get in the end zone right there. We take a huge hit stick, but I told you guys, that's why going on conservative is so important, Lamar. He literally just won't fumble unless he's tired. That's why I use the recuperation ability. You guys are going to see here, man, when I'm just flipping back, back and forth from formations, basically what they're doing, it's like refreshing a web page. You know, it's not like a glitch or anything. I know that was a big thing on Throne Stream last year. Just, you know, it was, he called it the stamina glitch, but it's actually not a glitch. It's like refreshing a web page. And when you have recuperation, he's going to get that stamina back quicker. And honestly, that's super important when you're using a quarterback that runs around as much as he does. And you're going to, you know, if you sell out for hits like that, or you sell out for the end zone like that, and you take hits like that, it's definitely worth it. Okay, right here, it looks like man coverage again. We should have X as long as he doesn't have Acrobat. The backside digs, dude, are so good in the red zone. They run all the way to the back of the end zone. They do a sharp cut towards the back. And honestly, your opponents, they, they lose track of him because they're really biting down these short routes. He bit down on the zig right there, leaving the backside dig wide open. Super effective route in the red zone. Definitely recommend using that one. All right, so now that we're already up a stop and 14 points, we're in a really good spot, and that's why that formation is so good. That's honestly why I prefer this trips over trip side end. It has these really interesting routes that aren't in trip side end. For example, that little running back out route is so smooth, it beats man coverage, and right there, it finds a really nice soft spot in the zone coverage. I don't know why my user just gets pulled out right there. It's kind of annoying. Right here, we should have just about everything bagged. And oh my God, look how fast Lamar is. But Derwin does a really nice job recovering, taking a good pursuit angle, making a big tackle. I thought he might have been out of there for a second. Ooh, that was a really good dot. I was hoping the outside quarter with Awesome One glowing orange to do a better job of playing that. I'm going to have to respect that a little bit more right there. Again, this is basically just curl flat, same play but just in a different formation. Oh, an 0-1 trap, big tackle right there, let's go. I think I'm gonna try to mix in a user rush right here. I miss, I miss, I miss. Oh my God, I have no stick work right there. I completely missed. It was a perfect time to mix in the user rush. We had play coverage every play, and I just missed the quarterback.
Oh, he fumbled. Lamar fumbled. Oh, my God. I was about to say this is why Lamar is so annoying to defend against. But right there, I guess he's not on conservative. I've never seen my Lamar fumble. Especially, I've never I don't think Lamar's ever fumbled for me. He fumbled on an arm tackle right there. He's one either tired or two. My opponent's just not a conservative ball carrier. Now, we're in a tough spot right here on my own 10-yard line. This is certainly an area where I can take a safety. I'm going to audible here, run the quarterback wrap. Let's see if we can get out of here. We take a big hit. My quarterback's going to be tired. I'm going to have to sit here, flip back and forth a little bit, regain my stamina. All right, so it's actually not that bad. He's only yellow after taking a massive hit, but it's super important to constantly check your stamina, guys. If you guys are red, if they're dark blue, they're going to throw the ball. Your quarterback's going to throw the ball slower. They're more likely to fumble. Your receivers are not going to run quick. They're going to, you know, not get open on routes. It's, it's just an absolute nightmare, so make sure you guys are checking your stamina often. Ooh, I need backfield mismatch to catch that. My guy lit up and still dropped it. Come on. Yo. Oh, my God. Okay. I love Lamar, but he almost just sold so hard on that throw. I thought it was a pick for a second. His acrobat went crazy. We got wide open on the cut, and he just threw it behind him. That was actually terrifying. The backside dig once again, possess and catch that way. If you guys rack it there, there's a pretty good chance that they get some sort of like wrap around the arm, around the waist type animation where the ball gets knocked out. So it's super important there to go ahead and possess and catch it using the A button. You're just more likely to catch the ball. We pick up a really nice first down right there. Two timeouts, 41 seconds left. Let's make something happen. I'm going to quick snap right here. I think he's going to blitz. He does blitz off the left-hand side with the slot corner. We have a wide open. Let's see if we can get some stick work here. Ah, uh, he was kind of preventing me from going out of bounds. I'm going to take my time out right here. And we're borderline field goal range. We're like two to three yards here to go up three possessions. So as long as we don't turn the ball over and take a sack, we should be all right. Okay, this is a really interesting look. You guys can see his slot corner on the right is not lined up over me. It's kind of making me think it might be zone right here. We'll see if the slot corner follows. It doesn't follow. I'm thinking zone here. No, it actually ended up being man, but it didn't really look like it. We'll go ahead. Just take our drag right here. Can we turn it upfield with Marvin Harrison? Yes, sir. Get out of bounds. Save our last time out just in case we have to kick three. Big time dot. Go ahead, quick snap this right here. He's going to contain. Let's see if we can run inside. Unfortunately, we just said it. I said I was going to save my last time out, but okay, actually offsides, which is really nice for us. That is the one downside to 146 when you're sliding your slot corners like that. Uh, is they're just more likely to be offsides. That's big for us, actually, because now we're going to save our time out. Okay, I guess the clock was running. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. I didn't know the clock still ran right there. Okay, that was actually pretty bad because now if we get tackled inbounds, we might not get it right here. But I'm going for it, man. I'm going for the glory. It might not be the smartest thing in the world, but it's what I'm doing. Ah, man. Good defense. I think I'm just going to take my three right here. Yeah, so I'm going to do the smart thing. I'll just take my three, you know, against every urge I have inside of me just to do something stupid, like go for a fake or literally just go for it. I'm going to take my three, go up three possessions here. He does get ball at half, so this game is by no means over, but we're playing great on both sides of the ball right now. Ah, uh, nice shot there to the tight end. I bit down on the hits. I sent a little bit of a blitz there. Five, man. He finds the good read. We're playing great defense still. As long as we make him work for points on this drive, I'm perfectly fine. You know, with giving up a couple points because we'll still be up two possessions. Again, the big thing is you really just have to make someone work for it, right? Like, if you're just giving up a free touchdown when you're up three possessions, like, congratulations, you're up 17-0. But if you just give up a cover three bomb on the next play, like, it doesn't really mean a whole lot, right? And right there, Derek Thomas has something to say about that. Coming up with a big time sack. Second and 18. Let's see if we can apply some pressure right here. He runs the ball. Okay. I spread my line right there. I really did not expect to run for my opponent on second and 18, down 17. Pretty surprised about that. Very conservative play call. Um, you know, I can live with it, though. I can certainly live with it. A couple yards here and there. It's perfectly fine. Like I said, we got to just make my opponent. Oh, come on. Awesome wall. What is that? Awesome wall. We got to look alive out there. We got the cloud flat. I was hoping it would do a better job, but nice dot. First down. Ah, he hits us with the backside delay fade. You hate to see those. Keep them balanced. Keep the clock running. 
Now I'm gonna guard both sidelines here. I'm basically this is kind of like a this is kind of like my version of double flatting when I'm not using zone drops. Okay, nice little check down right there. All right, maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I should have more yellow zones in the middle of the field. Really good dot right there. Oh, I got caught changing defenses. I accidentally audible to the wrong thing. He hit us with the inside seam, and we kind of made that drive pretty easy on him. We took a little bit of time off the clock there, about you know about three four minutes, but. But I would have liked to make it a little bit harder, man. We only really had him in one tough spot on the, on the second and 18. He was able to get out of it by running the ball. I should have just stayed with what was working right there. I kind of got a little bit too experimental. We ended up giving up seven, but as long as we're conserving the ball here, not doing anything too crazy, we should put ourselves in a position to win the game. So if he comes out 146, I'm definitely going to be running the ball a lot here. There it is, 146. He's definitely going to get a lot of base. Base is proven really good against this. Let's go ahead and just audible to it. Base is really hard to shoot, and as long as we're getting the block on the slot corner, which we're not able to do there, I might try out some of these quarterback runs as well. All right, so I'm going to mix in an RPO here, but I'm not going to run or pass. I'm going to run. I'm going to scramble with my quarterback. You guys can see this here. It's actually a really nice play. We almost got past Ronnie Lott. The D-lineman ended up shedding. I take, what, I take what I said back about it. It wasn't really that great of a play. It sometimes is really effective for me. It's actually a really nice play to mix in here and there, but... My opponent had good defense right there. Third and six. This is certainly running down. Not afraid to run here, like I said. Definitely don't want to get stopped. Lamar with the wheels. Wow, that was a great user. Great pursuit by my opponent. It's fourth and eight. I'm thinking I go for it right here, but honestly, that was a really solid user for my opponent. Now, the smart thing to do here, man, would be to punt it. But, honestly, I feel pretty confident. I don't really think this guy has played the greatest defense ever by any means. I'm feeling pretty pretty solid here. I think we get a dot man as long as we're holding our blocks right here. We got to make sure this left side slot corner does not scream. Okay, he's actually not going to go ahead and blitz him at all. And we should have B on the low ball. Got to be careful there with awesome. Let's see if I did low ball that. It probably would have been passed out a little too high. The outside third could have easily made a play on it, but by lowballing it, I put it in a position where only my receiver can get it. He actually faked the blitz, ended up blitzing like one or two people, gave me all a day in the pocket. We find the perfect read, and that is a huge conversion right there. So in situations like this, man, you have to do simple math, right? There's a 30-second play clock. We want to snap it under three minutes and 30 seconds. That way, after three plays, we can take it to the two-minute warning. And uh, he's found some pretty solid defense, man. The slot corner is shooting this run pretty heavily, but that's perfectly fine. Like I said, even if we run three times here, don't get the first down, it still takes it to the two-minute warning. I can go ahead, punt, go for it if I want to. It just leaves my opponent with really no time to come back. I'm going to go ahead and flip the run quickly here. That's the nice thing about spread as well. We don't have to have any receivers flip-flopping or anything like that. I'm going to run the base right here. It should be a little bit more effective, but Rob Woodson off the left-hand side is killing me right now. He came all the way across the, the formation right there to make the tackle. Third and five. I'm going to pass right here. Okay, so every time I've audible to the second spread, I've ran QB wrap. I'm going to mix it up here. Pass. He's going to send a little bit of a blitz. We should have the drag open right here as long as we hang on to it. Oh, my God. The user hits it. Prize of the ball. Loose. Fourth and five. I can't punt here, man. It's too short and mad. It's too easily attainable. We got good blocking. We had a guy open. Just not able to hang on to it. I racked it. I possibly could have possession caught it. I don't think I would have gotten the first down, though. That's the only problem. All right, so he's dragging in both guys. I'm going to a quick seam. I'm literally chucking a seam. If it's a blitz, I'm chucking a seam. If it's, you know, if it's coverage, he fakes the blitz. I'm going to go ahead and take my time with it. But I I'm thinking this is a blitz right here. It is a blitz. Can we get him peeling off? Oh, we can't. I don't know if I had anything on the right side. I saw that he had no deep blue on the left-hand side. It was only his user. I thought he might peel off at some point. I took the risk. It didn't pay off. We got to play some defense now. That is some really solid defense right there. Let's get after the quarterback. I was hoping for an intentional grounding right there. He's audibly in a bunch, which is pretty interesting. I'm getting caught here without my auto flip on. It's kind of messing me up a little bit, but that was a big set right there. Was really hoping for an intentional grounding, but we'll take it. Got to just play good defense. Okay, so he actually runs the ball again. He doesn't like the spread line look, which is honestly, I feel like that was a really bad play call for my opponent. He's going he's gonna to use his two-minute warning right there. He doesn't get any yards. He gets two yards. 
not a good decision by him i definitely would have passed right there so i'm gonna give him the same look right here if you guys want to see what it looks like i'm basically outside quartering at the tight end side that way if there's a deep cross or a deep post route he should do a pretty decent job of playing it and then i have the ver hook right there i thought it would do a little bit better of a job playing it but we get the tackle we force a fourth down what more can you really ask for Gotta watch for the table route. Ooh, he scrambles, but the clock keeps going, so we're perfectly fine. All right, he's gonna spike the ball, stop the clock. This is interesting. I thought he would kick here. I think this is borderline field goal range. I thought he would kick after spiking, but he's gonna choose not to, and he's gonna run the ball again. Interesting. The clock keeps going. Not sure about this decision making right now. Another spike. I feel like if you're him, you pretty much have to kick three here. Like, you're in field goal range. You have all three timeouts, so if you make it a one possession game, like, you still have three timeouts to get a stop. All right, so he ends up taking a delay a game. Not really sure what that was about. He's out of field goal range now. That was really bizarre. No idea what he was doing right there. That was that was really strange. All right, here we go. We're playing coverage, faking the blitz. Do we have the crosser? The crosser's not open. Dion did a really great job of it, even though it didn't get to him, Derwin. And Derwin finds himself in a very fortunate spot to get the pick right there. Game's not over. You know, he pretty much needs to onside at this point unless I just fumble right here. Uh, game's not over. Let's get one more first down and seal it. All right, that's, where, that's what I was talking about, man, with the 146. You're going to find yourselves offsides a ton. That's the second time Rod Woodson has been offsides. Makes this a little bit easier for us right here. First and five. Let's go ahead, run that RPO play, and take off of Lamar. But this 146, I didn't really think it was going to be good run defense, but it actually is proving to be really solid right now. All right, doesn't look like he's opting to use his timeouts right here. I'm going to go ahead, just run the ball. and He might just be conceding right here. He is in a pretty impossible spot if he wants to try and win this game. It seems like that's what's going to happen, man. We're going to go ahead, run the ball to the clock, win the game. GG to James Piano, man. This guy's super solid. I know he's a competitive player. Definitely a tight game there. We, we ran away with a little bit early. He had chances there late in the game to get back into it. We were able to seal it, man. We were able to clutch it up. No mistakes there at the end. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, man. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit as well. If you guys did enjoy that video, man, please hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a ton. And with that being said, man, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.